Hi everyone, this is Pierre-Rick from P2 Design. A few months ago, I made a video presenting a tool I use all the time when animating in Blender. What if I told you I found a similar add-on but under steroids? And I used this add-on extensively to create my latest animation. Let's check it out. In my latest animation, there is a lot of spinning, contacts, and apparent switching between the character and his staff. And this can be a nightmare. Fortunately, my friend Nacho De Andres, the creator of the amazing Animate Pro add-on, developed Transformator. With this Blender add-on, you can copy poses of objects or controllers over time, in world space, or relative one to the other, you can pin them, you can bake them, you can easily create or remove root motion in a few clicks and much more. And it's only $10 and the time you will save with this add-on is definitely worth it. Also, I'm not an affiliate. I make this video because this is a great tool for animation and animators in Blender. And I use it all the time. So let's get started. First off, we need to install the add-on. Go to Edit Preferences, go to the Add-on tab and click on the arrow in the top right corner. From there, click Install from File and find the zipped file. Or you can simply drag and drop the zipped file directly in Blender and click OK. Then, still in the Preferences, you can search for the Transformator add-on and you can choose where to display the add-on. By default, it will be created into the tab Animation but I prefer to have it in the item tab where I have my rig UI and transformation channels. Then I keep the other options by default. You can increase the number of buffer slots, but 10 is more than enough. This will make more sense in a moment. And then you can change the way information text are displayed. I also keep that by default. The add-on is divided in three tools. One to copy coordinates, the other to pin an object or a controller, and the last one to create custom pivot points. Clicking the last icon on the right will allow you to access the complementary options. Let's start with the first tool. The first example is a classic. Often enough, on most rig, when your character is manipulating props and you want to switch the prop parent, the controllers and the prop get all over the place. In this example, I have a master bone that allows me to control both the staff and the hands of the character. But on the next frame, I want the hand to control the staff. So I'd like to be able on this pose to switch mechanism. But when I do so, you can see my controllers going all over the place. What I want is to be able to keep this pose while I switch mechanism. So I will select all the controllers involved. I will make sure I'm using their global coordinates. We can switch using this button. We'll talk about the relative coordinates in a few seconds. And we can also choose if we want to paste the location, the rotation, or the scale. So with my controller selected, I will click on the copy icon. Now the selected controller's coordinates will be copied to a buffer. I can switch mechanism that will break my pose, but if I click on the paste icon, I recover the pose, but with the new mechanism. But if I play the animation, I'm losing the pose. This is because the pose wasn't keyed. To make sure the tool generates a key, we need to enable it. If I click the paste option again, my character will take the right pose. And I switched mechanism as expected. Now it's the left hand that controls the staff and no longer the staff master controller. Another cool thing is that whenever you're pasting your pose, the add-on will automatically select the involved controllers. And you can also select the buffered controllers by clicking this icon. Let's expand the option menu by clicking the gears icon. From there, we can access the copy buffer list. Here, by default, the add-on will store the last 10 copies you've made. Let's select the shoulders and copy their world space. A new buffer is created and I can easily choose one or the other whenever I want to paste the pose. You can rename any copy buffer by double-clicking on it. The pinning option on the left of the buffer name allows you to protect or save the buffer. 
By default, you can store 10 copies. Once you reach this threshold, the older copies get deleted. Here, I didn't pin the shoulders copy. If I add more than 10 copies and I go up, you can see that the shoulder buffer has disappeared. Buffers can be removed by clicking the X icon. You can modify the available copy buffers through the add-ons preferences. When copying coordinates, all transform channels are involved, but when pasting, you can choose what channel you are pasting on. Look how polished is the UI. Finally, the locked object mode will prevent you from selecting objects that are not in the same mode as the object we are currently manipulating. Currently, I can't select any object out of the rig because they are not in pose mode. If I switch it off, I can select the object, I can select back my rig, and the add-on will automatically switch between object and pose mode. That's really neat. Now, here is the best feature in my opinion. On this part of the animation, the hand IK is not parented to the torso controller. Both move independently. My rig features a parent switch where the hand can be parented to the torso. But as I do so, the space of the hand changes and it kind of teleports. I could copy the world space position of the hand and paste it and switch parent on each frame, but that will be very tedious. What I can do instead is select both arm controllers, select the keys I want to modify, and now in the transformator option, I can copy the global coordinates of those controllers over time. When I enable this option, all the transform of all the items selected will be recorded to the copy buffer for all the keys I have selected. I'm no longer copying one pose, but all the poses in that frame range. If I now switch the parent and click paste, you can see that I recover my animation, but I switch parent on all those poses. And that, my friends, is an amazing feature. By the way, if you want to learn how to create this advanced rig from scratch, and many others, check out my course The Art of Effective Rigging 2nd Edition on p2designacademy.com. And if you're enjoying this video, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. Here is another neat feature, the temporary pivot point. I will place my 3D cursor under the staff. I want the staff to swing left to right with my character balanced on it. If I click on Temp Pivot, I will enable temporary pivot and Blender will automatically switch to 3D cursor as a pivot point. With the staff selected, if I click on the plus button, the current position of the 3D cursor will be stored as a new temporary pivot point that belongs to the staff controller. So if I move the 3D cursor and select the staff, you can see that the 3D cursor position automatically updates and get back to the tip of the staff. Disabling temporary pivot, Blender switch back to the pivot mode I was using. If I click the selection arrow icon next to the first stored pivot point, it will automatically select the staff controller. I can select another controller, shift or right click to position the 3D cursor somewhere else, and store this new position. This is the new custom temporary pivot point of my torso, and I can now select the staff and use its own custom pivot point. So basically, you can store a custom position of the 3D cursor per controller, automatically select the corresponding controller, and switch the transform pivot point mode in one click. Super useful. Now I'd like to create a swinging motion of the staff with my character standing on it. And this can be a real nightmare, because I want the hand, the feet to perfectly follow the staff, but I don't have any built-in mechanism for this, because the staff can be attached to the hands, but the hands can't be attached to the staff, nor the feet. And on top of that, I'd like to also move the torso, but only change its location, not its rotation. So I just created a few keys using the temporary pivot of my staff swinging left to right. So now the first step is to select all the controllers I want to copy the coordinates from. I will start with the controllers in contact with the staff, both feet and the right hand. And I select last the staff so that it's the active controller. Now in the transformator option, I will click on global and it will switch the mode to relative. And I will only copy the current pose where the feet and the hand fit the staff. 
I can rename this first buffer and I will create a second buffer where I first select the torso and make the staff controller active and I will also copy this initial pose. I can now ask the add-on to paste this pose over time relative to the staff coordinates. To do so, I just need to select the staff, select the initial and final keyframe of the staff motion to define the time range of that motion and make sure that I create a keyframe, I create keyframes over time and I create a keyframe per frame. From there, I just need to select the hand and feet buffer and click on the paste button. It will take a few seconds to compute I can now select the controllers belonging to that buffer by clicking the select icon. We do have a keyframe per frame and it seems that the feet and hand are stuck to the staff. I can do the same thing with the torso controller, but this time I will disable rotation and scale because I just want to have a little translation of the torso as I move the staff. I selected the staff, I selected the keys to define the range, I clicked on paste motion and now you can see the torso translating following the relative position of the staff. I can offset its key poses by one or two frames and I get a little offset in the motion. You can't imagine all the work it takes to do that without this kind of tool. Another fantastic use case is the creation of root motion for animation for games. Here I have an attack animation I created for Noara and the root is not moving. So we can't use this animation to drive the root in the game engine. To fix that, the first step is to select the controllers that allows us to move the character in space. Basically the torso controller and the IK controllers. From there, I will select all the keys of those controllers and I will store their motion over time using the copy global. I can give this a name if I want, and then I will do the same, but I will only copy the motion of the torso controller. I could use the hip controller or the center of gravity controller. It has the closest motion to what would be the root motion, basically. And now, one cool feature we didn't discuss about previously is that Whenever you're copying the animation or the motion of one item, a controller or an object, you can paste it on any other object. So I can now select the root bone and I can choose what information I want to paste on it. So I don't want to paste the rotation and scale of the torso controller. I just want to paste the back and forth motion the Y axis in our case. And we don't care about that those controller may have a different orientation because we are using world space coordinates. I selected all the keys of the root. Since I had existing keys, I don't need to generate them. And I can now paste the motion. Now the root bone is moving on the Y axis exactly as the torso was. From there, I could simplify the root motion by editing its curves but for the sake of presentation, I will keep it as is. So it might feel a little weird because we're adding the root motion on top of our existing animation. So the character gets offset a lot. But we stored the initial animation without the root motion on the first copy buffer. So I just need to select it, re-enable all the transform channel and simply click paste. So on top of the root motion, I'm pasting the initial animation. And when I play it, I have my initial animation with root motion. And that my friend is a fantastic workflow because if you ever try to do that without this kind of add-on, there is a lot of empties, constraint and whatnot to be created. And that will take a lot of time. Now imagine you want to invert the process, remove root motion. You simply need to copy the motion of the controllers that allows to move the character, the IK feet and the torso, editing the motion of the root by removing its keys and canceling any transformation and paste all the other controllers motion and you're done. The last tool we have to cover is the pinning option. It's pretty straightforward. Let me select the center of gravity of my character and pin it. And now it doesn't move anymore. Note that I'm playing the animation. If I scrub through the timeline, I can see my controller moving, but as soon as I stop, it will update its position. 
The tool features an option to more or less aggressively update the controller position. If you experience any bug or any crash with your rig, just disable it. The tool will still work, but it will be less aggressive. As for the copy tool, we can enable or disable any transform channel, like location, rotation, etc. So let's say that for some reason I want to pin one of the feet to the ground, but keep its rotation, I can absolutely do that. This is the kind of option that can be useful whenever you're cleaning motion capture, for example. This tool is shipped with a baking option, allowing you to bake on the existing keys or to generate keys on every frames, both using the selected keys range. It's a great tool to pin any contact poses, like an elbow or a knee on the ground. The pin reality, on the other hand, is perfect when you want to create interaction between different controllers or different objects. On this rig, for example, the spear is controlled by the right arm, but I can't control the left arm at the same time. What I can do is select any controller I want to pin, select last to make it active the controller or object I want them to be pinned relative to. As I have more than one object or controller selected, the pin relative is available. And now whenever I'm moving the right hand, the left hand will follow. From there I can create my animation and then bake the left hand. A lot of rigs allows you to switch parent, especially for IK controllers, parented to the head, to the chest, to the torso, to the hips, but you can't cover every possibility that would make a rig too complex and cluttered. But with that tool, I have no limitation. I can do whatever I want. For example, creating an idol where the character is holding his arm as if he was hurt, pin the right hand to the left arm, and now I can animate my idol without having to take care of the right arm. So now you can imagine how powerful this add-on is, and I'm not lying when I tell you that I'm now using it on all my animations. This is the end of this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.